program. Uh, I'm TD, that's Matt, and we're going to be covering an article today. Please check the link down below. Please don't ask me for the article. It is linked down below. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh oh, we're going to have an echo. Why is it doing that? Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Technical idiot. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. Kind of a technical idiot. There we go. I don't need so let's get started with the article. I'm drinking some native mud to. Uh, it's very good. The, the last time we had native mud, it actually had the chai uh, actually in it, the chai tea. So this is just straight up native mud. So this is really good. All right, y'all. I'm going to share the old screen here. 19 people. How y'all doing? All welcome, right, here we welcome, go. y'all. Here Let's we go. into the article. I probably won't read this whole article. It is linked down below. Uh, there's a ton of great information here. The Idiot Box, and this is brought to you by James Corbett at the Corbett Report. The Idiot Box, how TV hypnotizes you. Mm, very true. <clears throat> you can tell a lot about an item by the nicknames we give it. So what do our nicknames for the television tell us about the device? The Idiot Box, the Boob Tube, the Television. It doesn't take a super sleuth to puzzle this one out. From the very inception of commercial television in the 1950s when the phrase boob tube was first coined to lament the dumbing down effect that the device was presumed to be having on the populace to the zenith of the TV's culture hege hegemony in the late 20th century, fears about the television's ability to create zombified couch potatoes out of its passive audience have been ever present. And it's been a long time since I watched television. And um, it's very interesting because I've never seen any episodes of The Black Mirror. But um, as soon as somebody was telling, about me, telling me about this show, The Black Mirror, I said, that's the television, <laughs> which I do think is the premise of the title of The Black Mirror, which has all these dy dystopian things that have been predictive programming that we're experiencing mm. now. Um, it's no coincidence that the 2006 comedy, or should that be docudrama, Idiocracy, introduces its viewers to an epitomous future idiocracy in which the intelligence of the population has declined to shockingly low levels. By showing a junk food ingesting lawyer in the midst of enjoying hit television shows in the year 2505. It's also no coincidence that the same movie sees protagonist Private Joe Bowers formulating a plan for heading off the development of this idiocracy by encouraging people to read books rather than watch TV. We all know the throat. Television makes you dumb, lazy, and passive. And by implication, it renders you susceptible to the lies and manipulation of those who create the TV programming. But is it true? As it turns out, not only are concerns about the content and the presentation of television programming well-founded, but there is an even darker side to the device than is commonly realized. There is ample research to suggest that the TV is actually designed to send you into a trance-like state that lowers your cognitive defenses against the lies the television networks and their corporate owners are attempting to push hmm. on their docile audience. In order to understand this neglected part of the television story, we first have to reconsider the advent of commercial radio in the 20s and civilization-altering effects it wrought on the world in the 1930s. It is difficult from our perspective today to properly understand just how transformative a technology that radio was. It altered people's daily routines as the widespread popularity of the Amos and Andy program reportedly lowered church attendance on Sunday evenings. Hmm. Whoa. It altered people's perceptions of the world, provided them the opportunity to hear live on the scene reports from distant locales, and it provided the would-be social engineers with an entirely new vector for manipulating the masses. I recounted the story of how William 
Pauly formed the struggling Philadelphia-based Columbia Phonographic Broadcasting System radio network into the massive CBS empire on the back of his success in selling cigars to his radio audience. But it wasn't just advertisers who realized the utility of this new medium for influencing the thoughts and habits of a susceptible population. Largely forgotten today, FDR's fireside chat radio addresses were a revolutionary step at the time, affording the president a chance to talk directly to the American public without the newspaper reporter's editorial insertions or the newsreel's editorial editor's interventions. That would be interesting. What's if, that? If Brandon went on the air and just <laughs> that had, would be, a po- that had, would be very- had his own podcast, that would be awesome. That would be very interesting. That would be very interesting. But we actually already talked about that. We referenced the movie Idiocracy. Now, and and by the way, I've never seen the movie Idiocracy, okay. but I've only uh, I only know of accounts of the movie. Okay, for the first time, the average Jane and Joe could literally hear the president speaking to them in the comfort of their own home. The intimacy of the medium was profound, and no doubt a contributing factor to FDR's incredible electoral successes. Naturally, the potential of this new medium for controlling the population was quickly recognized by the powers that shouldn't be. In 1935, social scientists Hadley Cantrell and Gordon Allport wrote The Psychology of Radio, in which they opined radio is is an altogether novel medium of communication, preeminent as a means of social control and epical in its influence upon the mental horizons of men. Hmm. Accordingly, it wasn't long before the manipulators of the organized habits and opinions of the masses who, as Edward Bernays informed us, constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. So if you don't know who Edward Bernays is, that's a great read to study. Um, Basically, the king of um social engineering and Hmm. that's where we get stuff like um ready baked cake mixes and you just like crack an egg and you mix it up and it makes you think that you're like making a cake or something took note and began working on the problem of how best to use radio as a medium of social control and there's been several documentaries on edward bernays and uh, edward bernays was a relative of sigmund freud so they were all and they're all a bunch of wicked evil devils but as it happens the aforementioned Hawley cantrell just happened to be the old dartmouth college roommate of nelson rockefeller whose rockefeller foundation <laughs> provided a 67,000 2 two-year grant to cantrell to found the princeton radio project a research unit which as the rockefeller foundation tells us used the tools of social psychology to study radio <laughs> In other words, they manipulated people via radio. The director of the project, Paul Lazarfeld, framed the group's research interests thusly. If radio in the United States is to serve the best interests of the people, it is essential that an objective analysis be made of what these interests are and how the unique psychological and social characteristics of radio may be devoted to them. Although cloaked in the language of social concern, the group's research took a decided devious turn. Well, oh, there's a shocker. When Orson Welles, hyper-realistic for the time, presentation of H.G. Wells, classic science fiction story, The War of the Worlds was broadcast as the Halloween edition of Mercury Theater on the air on October 30th, 1938, the resulting hysteria with some panic listeners apparently mistaking the dramatization for the actual news report of an alien invasion became fodder for the Princeton Radio's project first major study. The work that resulted, The Invasion from Mars, a study in the psychology of panic, remains a landmark in the field Hmm. of media studies that is still dissected and debated among academics to this very day. And this is how social planners have been using these different media, whether it's radio, whether it's television, whether it's movies, Hmm. whether it's Hollyweird. In his preface to the 1966 edition of the book, Cantrell stresses stressed that what the subsequent research into the War of the Worlds hysteria revealed 
was just how susceptible the, gen the general public was to being whipped into a frenzy of panic and just how useful electronic media could be in that endeavor. And it's real interesting if you do a little look into Orson Welles and also H.G. Wells, and they are not related, but hmm. they are, um, one of them's a Fabian socialist, and they're really into, you know, dystopic novels and all that good stuff. Interesting. Very interesting stuff. And it just so happens that they were instrumental in uh, brainwashing people and, you know, making them think that there was potentially a real alien invasion. Go figure. Since the publication of The Invasion from Mars in 1940, I've often been asked whether I thought such a thing could happen again. The questionnaires usually imply that we are now too sophisticated to be taken in by anything so fanciful. Unfortunately, I've always had to reply that, of course, it could happen today and even on a much more extensive scale. I think of the, um, they took babies from the incubators, you know, all that CNN brainwashing stuff where they, you know, weapons of mass destruction and all that stuff, how they lie on TV and how they uh, green screened that stuff that was going on in the war in Iraq on CNN. And they had like, you know, bomb helmets on, on a green screen and their act like stuff was blown up and it was fake. Princeton radio project and the various organizations associated with its affiliate researchers, such as Rockefeller funded office of public opinion research would continue their studies into the psychology of social control through the media. And as effective a medium as radio had proven to be for this purpose, the next telecommunication technology television would prove that much more useful to the would-be social engineers. Television hypnotizes the masses. For at least 150 years, researchers have known that the brain carries electrical currents. These oscillating electrical signals, formerly known as neural oscillations, are better known to the public as brain waves. Measured by EEG, these brain waves typically have a broad spectral content, but various brain functions are associated with increased activity in specific frequency bands. Alpha and the 8 to 12 hertz frequency band are typically associated with periods of relaxed wakefulness and tend to increase when the eyes are closed. Beta waves in the 13 to 30 hertz band are associated with normal waking consciousness. Other types of neural oscillations include delta waves, 1 to 4 hertz, associated with deep non-REM sleep. Theta waves, 4 to 8 hertz, associated with learning, memory, and spatial navigation. And gamma waves, 30 to 150 hertz, associated with large-scale brain networking activity and cognition. The conscious state observed when alpha wave activity is prevalent is often described as hypnagogic. Hip, oh, hypnagogic, okay, or a type of daydreaming lying somewhere between sleep and wakefulness. When the brain is in this state, a person's critical facilities are typically disengaged, leaving them more susceptible to information that would otherwise be rejected by their fully conscious mind. In other words, they're in a brain, a state where they are susceptible to brainwash. As it so happens, this Hypnogogic state is precisely the type of state that is induced when one begins watching television. Huh. As, as Julius Nelson details in The Perfect Machine, Television and the Bomb, in November 1969, a researcher named Herbert Krugman, who later became manager of public opinion research at General Electric, General Electric Headquarters in Connecticut, decided to try to discover what goes on physiologically in the brain of a person watching TV. He elicited the cooperation of a 22-year-old secretary and taped a single electrode to the back of her head. The wire from that, this electrode connected to a Grass Model 7 polygraph, which in turn interfaced with a Honeywell 7600 computer and a CAT 400 baud, a 400B computer. Clicking on the TV, Krugman began monitoring the brain waves of the subject. What he found was that within about 30 seconds, the brain waves switched 
from predominantly beta waves indicating alert and conscious attention to predominantly alpha waves indicating an unfocused, receptive lack of attention. The state of aimless fantasy and daydreaming below the threshold of consciousness. When Krugman's subject turned to reading through a magazine, beta waves reappeared indicating that conscious and alert attentiveness has replaced the daydreaming state. Krugman's initial crude experiments were repeated and verified by extensive and more accurate testing. There was no doubt TV rapidly induces an alpha state consciousness in its viewers. As Nelson goes on to report, its findings gave rise to an entire field of research within the advertising industry with NW Airs, ABH using EEGs to evaluate the effect of commercials for large name clients like AT&T and marketing firms like Simon's Marketing Research Bureau, Cockfield, Brown & Company, KSWG, following suit shortly thereafter. The field these eyes and companies pioneered discovered how best to implant messages in the minds of the Alpha State TV viewing audience. They discovered that while in this state, brains are more responsive to tone of voice, rhythm, and melody, rhyme, and harmony, and pictorial emotional triggers that straight than straightforward speech. That's why everything has a that's why, why everything you go has background music. That's why you can't go to Walmart. That's why you can't go to the grocery store without some music going on in the background because they know that it just makes you susceptible to um being manipulated. Yep. So all the other marketing that's going on in the shelves and the music's playing in the background. And it's just uh, it's it's whooping you into a um, a state of manipulation. It wasn't long before advertisers dropped any pretense that a commercial was designed to inform a viewer about the specifications of a product. Instead, began concentrating on songs, jingles, and carefully worded slogans combined with emotionally suggestive visuals to embed a desired product or idea in the public consciousness. Krugman summed up the meaning of his experimental findings by nothing that the real information transmitted during a television broadcast is that which is not thought about at the time of exposure, i.e. the unconscious, subliminal, and emotional nature of the program. Hmm. Tony Schwartz, the marketer who was credited with winning the presidency for Jimmy Carter. Wow. I mean, that guy, if you can get Jimmy Carter elected, I mean, that guy's got chops. <laughs> By carefully crafting his television persona, was more blunt about the process of his tell-all confessional, the responsive cord, how radio and TV manipulated you, who you vote for, what you buy, and how you think. Speaking mm. in his capacity as a political advisor, Schwartz admitted, Commercials that attempt to tell the listener something are inherently not as effective as those that attach to something that is already in him. We are not concerned with getting things across to people as much as out of people. Electronic media are particularly effective tools in this regard because they provide us with direct access to people's minds. Any serious student of television should have no difficulty in identifying the ways that this access to people's minds have been used by con men of various stripes, not just the ad men with a particular product to sell, but the would-be controllers of society who are looking to steer society in a particular direction. Some of the attempts at this manipulation of the TV viewing audience seem almost quaint from today's perspective. Remember when Fox admitted to inserting climate propaganda? And there's a link in here. So if you want to check this out, you can click on mm -hmm. the hyperlink. Uh, they admitted to inserting climate propaganda and all their programming in order to manipulate the public. Ah, those were the days. These days, the TV is being used even more effectively and for an even more nefarious agenda to weaponize your neighbors against you as adversaries adversaries in the new biosecurity state. We talked about that. Like, oh, if you smell your neighbor burning their wood stove, call 311. Yeah. We don't have to speculate about this. Last year, we saw the dramatic revelations that Britain's shadowy independent scientific 
pandemic influence uh, group on behaviors, <laughs> SPI-B, had employed the nation's top social scientists to discover ways to more effectively sell the scam to the public. Their answer? To use the media to increase the sense of personal threat. From the Rona, of course. If we ever merge from this period of madness with our wits still intact, this might make for an interesting study for future researchers. To what extent does television viewing correlate with one's belief in the scam? I hypothesize that the correlation would be significant. And this doesn't even reference how much our federal government mm. paid to advertise for the solution to the scam uh, many 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 million dollars regardless it is a documentable fact that television induces certain brain states in its audience and it is equally documentable fact that rich and powerful special interests have been researching how to use this tv induced hypnosis to their advantage for over half a century to believe that the art and science of manipulating the public has not progressed significantly from the days of Krugman and Schwartz would be the height of naivete to the future fake news and the new media. Now what you're thinking TV. Pff, okay. Boomer. <laughs> Yes, in case you didn't know, TV is so last century. Now the public are all crazy about the latest Netflix series at best and short disjointed meme videos on TikTok at worst. The youth of today are not getting their information or their misinformation from television. But as you may have already noticed, the powers that shouldn't be are busily working on steering the new online media in the same direction as the heavily controlled TV paradigm. The fact that you are reading these words shows that they haven't been successful in that endeavor yet. And that's what's really frustrating. You know, we try to we try to condense content and make it digestible. But at the same time, yeah. people are like, oh, I'll get to the point, you know, because everybody is so ADD and so brainwashed and so uh, yeah. television programmed and everything is like, ah, you're, you're just rambling, but we're trying to give you information in context you know what i mean yes and so that's why we're taking the time to read this article provide it in an audio format um so it's something that you can consume yeah absolutely however there are monumental changes in the media landscape on the horizon and as always if we aren't prepared for those changes we will be caught up in the next area of media manipulation and control unfortunately the way things are heading once we are inserted into the next media paradigm, we may never have a chance to escape. And obviously, James is referencing the metaverse and these type of things. Yeah. And um, the, the link to the article is down below. Um, I highly recommend the Corbett Report. He has lots of great articles and information there. Everything Everything that he ever does is always um, well documented and cross referenced, and he always provides the hyperlinks. And uh, as long as the original source stuff hasn't been removed, which is happening a lot, yeah, uh, even from the Wayback Machine. But but yeah, we just wanted to put the information out about the old boob tube, the black yeah. mirror. Wanted to put this article into your hands providing it for you in an audio format so you can listen to it as you're doing your things yeah that's the that's the sad thing we have lots of family members and i know lots of other people too that you know they really let the black mirror think for them you know especially with their own channels and stuff especially since you got like this right wing and left wing type of paradigm they're like oh let me tune in today for my programming and then see what um what they want me to think so whatever so if it's climate related or whatever they go on there see what what's up if it's cooling or warming and then you know whenever when anybody walks up to them and says oh do you know something about you know do you know what's do you know what's going on in the world or something like that they'll just spew out the same garbage that they've been programmed 
And if you don't, um, if you don't believe it or whatever, they kind of freak out. So <laughs> because they've been programmed and um, they don't even think for themselves, you know, because yeah, they I, just watch it. And I'm, I'm in somebody's house every day new person you know oh my I, word i deal with the public I'm i know in and out of people's homes i'm looking at projects and building projects and different things like that and it is fascinating to me how the tv is always on perpetually on so many times perpetually. you're you're trying to talk to somebody and they always say oh let me turn the tv down but yeah thanks i mean can you can you go for five Just seconds turn it off without the idiot box and why is it blaring and why is it and it'll be on in every room perpetually going and we and you know we deal going. with work projects that impede people's um satellite connections and stuff and it is like messes them up it's armageddon y'all it is like the end of the world as we know it and they don't feel fine and they're not going to get their sports ball thing it's uh -oh. always on a friday and it's always like the sports ball it's either um you know, hundred year sports ball rivals, or it's the Super Bowl, or it's like, you know, uh NASCAR or something like that. And every time, whatever, you know, if if the if the data does not come across <laughs> the mirror, it's like, what am I gonna do with life if I, I can't know. watch the black mirror? And now, and you did this to me. Who's gonna pay for <laughs> this? Somebody has to die. And it's unbelievable. I y'all. If you even knew, and it and it's and the longer I live, it gets worse and worse. And the older people get, the worse it is. I mean, it's like it's like digital uh, opium. Yeah, literally. talk about the opium of the masses. Television, mm. the Ooh. Black Mirror, opium, and it is absolutely a religion, and it's a cult, and it is beyond addictive. And you have very um in seemingly intelligent uh older folks that have experienced an enormous yeah. amount of life and enormous amount of life experiences and dude you turn their tv off and if they can't get it you are like you are the biggest scum of the earth well i've seen the last uh the in the last two years somewhat normal people and it was sadly the older generation um and they went from being very you know, they would go outside and work a lot and everything like that. And they would just, they were always active and everything. And then after the two years went by, they were super big into CNN and all the programming. And now they really hardly ever go outside. They don't want to work and get their hands dirty. And they just perpetually sit inside and watch the Black Mirror or uh, watch CNN on their computer perpetually. So it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Um, how they've been able to um, program people through the screen. Yeah. As and, simple as that is. And, and make them mm. crave and yep. want the programming. Give me, Love that's it. why they call it television programming. Give me the programming. I want the programming. Yep. And don't turn it off. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm convinced. I'm convinced, you know, I don't, I, I'm not buying this whole EMP thing. And it's going to wipe. No, and it's going to third world us because they're in, not going to let in it a very happen. real way. If we if an EMP, it would be very there would be there'd be lots of bad stuff that would happen if everything got wiped, you know, magnetically. But they would lose all their leverage and all their juice. They would lose they would lose all of it. And they've they've spent a 100 or so years here developing this control mechanism. Yeah. And if it got wiped by an EMP um stuff would happen and uh they wouldn't you know and i mean i know what happens when we knock somebody's satellite dish out of place and it for more than uh 12 minutes and it's cataclysmic yeah so uh, so worldwide emp would uh be devastating oh i'm gonna we're gonna have some cool stuff coming out on elon musk or if you just want to check it out Go to the Corbett Report. Uh, he's got a great one-hour thing on Musk. I was going to do a little excerpt of it, but it's very well done. There's an enormous amount of um, information there. Any any Mox YouTubers, which I thought was awesome. So uh, I thought that was cool. Also, tomorrow, 
uh, tomorrow's video is going to be a really funny one. It's kind of like a spoof video, um, if that's even what they call them nowadays. But uh, it's just going to be a really funny video. It's called about um, people who only, uh, if people only eat bugs or whatever. So something like that. And it's going to be pretty funny. So, so when we jump tuned. off of here, Matt's going to start editing that video yep. and y'all are going to get to check that out tomorrow. Yep. Have we a good hope, old laugh. Hope you enjoy it. Hope it makes you laugh. Yeah. And uh, we really appreciate y'all hanging out with us and we're going to, the Texas mom and James are in there working on the, the studio. Yep. They're painting. Painting. So Tech we'll be no. migrating into the studio here, hopefully within a week or so. Yeah. Put down the flooring. Yeah, we bought all the flooring for it. So. We got all the shelves and everything. So we'll be moving the website inventory in there. So uh, yeah. if you haven't been on the website in a while, check out our website. Check out the t-shirts. We got some new t-shirts. And uh, we got the honey and the coffee and the teas and the candles and all that good stuff. Yeah. So we really appreciate y'all hanging out. And hope y'all have a great night. And we'll see you on the next video. All right. See y'all 